What's up everybody, Tim Vicks here and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we try to extract a diesel-like fuel from used engine oil and tires. So now the question is, were we successful and if yes, then did this fuel actually work? Let's talk about it. Vishal and Chandrasekhar. They are good buddies of mine and one thing that brings us together is our passion for driving. We have been on several road trips together and each and every moment of it has been incredible. Huh? So naturally we were very upset to hear about the news of depleting fossil fuels. With over 4 million vehicles being sold per year in India alone, the rate at which fossil fuels are depleting is alarming. You know it, we know it, everyone knows it, but are we doing something about it? Well, yes, significant amount of uh, research is being done on electric vehicles, but also people are trying to extract fuel from different sources. So we pulled our chairs, turned on our computers and sat down to find out more facts about this, but we ended up binge watching Netflix and YouTube. Well, that happened once, but when we actually sat and tried to find out, we got so many articles about people trying to extract fuel from so many different creative sources. So after doing some extensive literature survey and consulting our professors, we asked ourselves, why don't we try to extract fuels from used engine oil and tires? Yes, you heard that right. We are using used engine oil and used tire oil as a source of fuel. Nowadays, the number of vehicles on the road keep increasing. Consequently, the number of vehicles which turn up for servicing in a service center or a workshop also increase. This means there is an increase in used automotive materials such as used tires and engine oil. So what do we do with these materials? We could either discard them or we could recycle them. Recycling is much better option because these two materials are non-biodegradable in nature. Now you may be wondering, how can we get tire oil from used tires? There are industries with complicated machineries which are able to achieve this. The process takes place at high temperatures and in under controlled conditions. So yes, it is possible to produce tire oil from used tires. Then how did we manage to obtain the diesel-like fuels from these waste feedstock? Well, the answer is pyrolysis. First, we completely studied how the process works. Then, we made a 3D CAD modeling using SOLIDWORKS software of our experimental setup. Then we tried to fabricate the exact CAD model into a working experimental setup and we just succeeded in that. Then for the raw materials, uh, the waste engine oil was obtained from a Royal Enfield showroom. I don't know why Vikram skipped KTM showroom, but uh, we obtained it from a Royal Enfield showroom. Then uh, for the waste tire oil, we obtained from a vendor nearby. Uh, we all collected the uh, samples with us and we were ready for the extraction process. Now the extraction process, the main concept is simple. Uh, when the waste feedstock is added into the reactor, it uh, gets heated and the temperature uh, will be around 450 to 500 degrees Celsius. When the waste feedstock is heated, the vapors comes out from the waste feedstock, that is waste tire oil and waste uh, engine oil. The vapors goes into the condenser. A condenser is a double pipe condenser, that is the vapors goes into an inner pipe and uh, cool water will be circulating in the outer pipe. So the cool water uh, recirculates in the outer pipe, which uh, cools and uh, condenses the vapors into a liquid which will be collected in a beaker. Uh, the yield was obtained uh, was around like uh, for waste engine oil we obtained around 8 liters of uh, pyrolytic oil and for tire oil we obtained around 7 liters. So this is how we obtained our diesel like fuels. So did that extracted fuel work? Well yes and no. Let me explain. 
So after we obtained this fuel, we tested it in a Kirloskar single cylinder four stroke diesel engine. Now the fuel that we obtained from the tire did not work well. However, the fuel that we obtained from the used engine oil worked like a charm. This was mainly due to the fact that the cetane value and the calorific value of this fuel was significantly good. However, one major drawback with this fuel was that the emissions was very high when compared to the traditional diesel. So in order to overcome that, what we did is that we took this fuel and blended it with traditional diesel in the ratio of 20, 40, 60 and 80. Uh, we tested this blend again and we were not surprised to find out that the out of all these blends, the B20 blend worked the best and it had the most ideal emission characteristics that were kind of similar to that of traditional diesel. We were not surprised considering the fact that this blend had 80% traditional diesel and 20% of pyrolyzed engine oil. While for most of you 20% might not be a big thing, but for us it was a success, bearing in mind the overall volume of diesel being consumed worldwide. And after all, big changes start with small steps, right? This project was immense fun and it wouldn't have been possible without Vishal and Chandrasekhar. I'm really glad that some of the secrets of this project has not been spelled out. There are a lot of memories I couldn't forget during this project. That too, mainly when we were working, we just wanted to test the amount of quantity of fuel inside the reactor. So what Vikram did, he opened a valve and just inserted a probe like thing to measure the level of oil. So when he took the valve out, there was a full of wings of fire in front of us and then somehow managed to close the fire and uh, we also <laughs> took a great photo session in that uh, smoke smoky place because the full lab was fully covered with smoke but uh, Vikram found it as a great uh, picture taking spot and well Vishal it was supposed to be a secret between me and you but since you already spelt it out yes that was one of the most craziest thing that happened with us during this entire project uh, luckily no one got hurt so guys remember safety is first when you're dealing with these kind of stuff um, coming to the photo now well uh, once the room was filled with smoke i could see beams of sunlight entering through cracks and windows and i told vishal come now let's take pictures i mean seize this opportunity bro where are you going to get a room filled with smoke and you know this entire tindal effect thing going on so yeah, that's how creative minds work, I guess. So we seized that opportunity and uh, we actually ended up getting some good pictures. Here are a few of them. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you found this video to be useful. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day. If you like this video, then please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and I will catch up with you all in the next one.